In this part of the tutorial, I will show how to make customized Source Filmmaker particles from scratch, such as these muscle flashes. In the upper corner, press Windows and navigate to the Particle Editor tool. Press File, New. Then create a new particle slot and name it. Um, I recommend typing AA with two slashes for the main particle slot, since the particle editor sorts alphabetically. Um, let's pause for a second. In the system properties, you define small chunks of code that control how each sprite is rendered on screen. I will do everything step by step, but 80% of your particle slots will have this sort of structure. In render animated sprites, the animation rate should be between 0.6 and 1.2. Movement Basic applies a rudimentary physics upon all generated particles. Lifetime Random defines for how long a particle is displayed. Position within Sphere, Random sets a particle's spawn distance from control point and its initial launch speed. We'll reconstruct the aforementioned system structure building each particle module sequentially. A distance of 50 in Particle Editor is around 2 meters, so a distance of 5 is 20 centimeters. Alpha controls transparency, alpha fade. In makes particles appear gradually, while alpha fade out makes them vanish smoothly. I use emit continuously, even for bursts, so I can fine tune burst intensity later by lowering the emission duration in SFM. Next, I'll assign a material to the particle slot, using my custom textures available on Patreon slash Hoobitube. You can use Valve's built-in materials, but I never do. Random Force is my favorite force generator, it allows me to add jitter to the particles generated. In Movement Basic, higher drag increases air resistance, meaning particles need more force to move. Now let me explain the operator fade in and fade out functions. If, for instance, we have a radius random initializer between 45 and 25, we can put a 1 second fade in like so and a 1 second fade out like so. The end fade out time can't be smaller than the emit continuously duration. Now, the particles emitted in the beginning are around 90% bigger than the particles emitted at the 0 0.05 mark. Now, let's create another particle slot that will be connected to the main one. I added only one dash after AA, so it's sorted after AA with double dashes, but before AB with double dashes. I will edit the first particle slot we made, shorten the lifespan, increase the radius, decrease the initial velocity to create a muzzle flash out of glow material sprites.
Now I'll attach the second particle slot as a child of the first slot. To create muzzle smoke, I'll load my custom animated smoke particle into the material slot. In radius scale, a scale bias above 0.5 speeds up the exponential transition from start to end scale. Pull towards control point does exactly what it says. It pulls particles toward a control point. You can change which control point it targets by setting any control point number, not just control point zero. Adding more force generator entities makes your particles behave more realistically. In action scenes, every object is constantly influenced by thousands of forces, so layering multiple forces creates a more natural and dynamic effect. Alpha random controls transparency. So 255 means fully opaque, zero is fully transparent. For smoke, avoid using max alpha to keep it realistic. Let's save here as a checkpoint and preview how it looks. Valve textures can make the particle editor crash when browsing, so it's good to save every once in a while. Now, in SFM load the first particle slot just like any other particle. By my standards, it still feels kind of empty, so let's enhance it, returning back to the particle editor. Sequence Random Initializer selects chosen sprite frames or animations from the chosen VMT material for each particle.
Rendered sprite trails will look broken if the material isn't defined as a trail. Let's choose a different one. Trail length random sets the range of possible lengths for the trails. Setting high random force with drag near 0.3 in movement basic creates turbulent sparks that stay mostly in place but spin rapidly. Now in a time lapse I will tweak random elements of the particle, mostly color and proportions. Once saved in the particle editor, the particle updates automatically in the session. I'll add more muzzle flashes and accompanying lights. It still feels empty and uncinematic. So I'll add a new particle for Muscle Flash uh, Smoke Downwash. Position along path, random places particles randomly along a path between control points 0 and 1 during initialization. I'll create a particle that extends smoke clouds between two control points, bright for 0.3 seconds, then fading to a darker shade while animating at double speed to simulate turbulence. Now in SFM, we can extend the particle between control point 0 and control point 1. It 
It looks decent, but I'll tweak some properties by right-clicking the particle and opening the particle system in the element viewer. Instance the particle system and select particle system definition. From there, edit the properties you set earlier. Try to keep track of your changes. After identifying what's missing using real-time edits in the particle system definition, go back to the particle system editor and apply your changes there. Save your changes to update all particle instances in SFM automatically. I'm quite happy with this and we can reuse this in future scenes despite the time it took to make it. On my Patreon, you can download my best-selling bundle of hundreds of particles used by top SFM creators including the creator of Skibidi Toilet and The Winglet.